Frank Thomas here, youboughtjunkie.com. That's www.youboughtjunkie.com. I wanted to give you a quick tutorial here that uh, shows you how to go the next step when you're doing um, robots and such. Now I'm going to show you some of the guts of one of my robots that is actually part of one of my uh, other membership sites called um, Robot Slave Army where I where I uh, my members get a lot of these robots that are pre-compiled. But I wanted to show you today a little bit of a programming technique. What I'm uh, wanting to do is I have a lot of sites that use WordPress robot or WP robot and uh, I like to be able to snapshot the actual settings very quickly. There is no real feature within the plugin to grab those settings and dump them somewhere else. So WordPress um, or sorry UBOT Studio to the rescue. Okay, so I've got a site here, and it's, what I'll be doing is I'll be on the first tab here, entering in the statistics to uh, actually clone a site and then save those settings, okay? So I'm just going to press play here, and it's just a very simple robot. You'll see that it goes in. Um, it will log me in to the WordPress site. It'll run a, another subroutine which will uh, grab the settings and then log me back out. So the logging in is pretty straightforward. I'll show you what's happening here in the actual grabbing of the info. So basically what it's going to do is going to grab the uh, the URL of the actual site and the the actual file name they want to save everything to. It's going to point me right to the options page. Okay. I'm going to create a list which using a clear list and I'm going to basically sketch every single setting one by one like WPR randomize. And you notice here that um, I am setting a local variable called temp with the uh, scrape chosen value which is checked. Okay, Some of these values are checked and some of these values are just value. Okay, Once I grab it and put it into temp, I add it to the list by putting in the name of the actual field that I'm grabbing, what type of field it is, and the actual value that's grabbed. Okay, You'll see this is the same thing over and over again. So this one here, you'll see that this exactly matches the value, the scrape chosen attribute, see here, checked, checked, okay? Value, value. Now, um, what I'll do is I am going to bring you to this, directly to this page, okay? And I'm going to just put a stop in it here. I'm going to tell it to stop the script. So let's just run it here. Okay, so where did I get this information? So you see here, choose by attribute. What I can do is I can select, right click, choose by chosen attribute. You see here, name, and this is the string here. This is the actual name. For this particular plugin, it, it's very good in the fact that it uses names that are distinct for each and every value within the form. Okay, so that's what that's happening. So then I just set it to that. And basically what's happening here is I say set local temp and what I'll do is I'll right click and scrape chosen value and I already know that I want let's say checked so what I'll do is I'll select checked okay now let's just take a look here and let's just uh, see why I chose that if I go in here and I select value it's gonna say yes and you think oh well it's, it's uh, check so it's gotta be yes so if I uncheck it and I choose by attribute and I select value still says yes so that does not work but if you look at checked it says false okay let me reselect that okay checked is now true and that's the reason why there is a secondary entry down here now this happens with check boxes everything just works with drop downs like if you look in here if you look at the choose the attribute then the value here is published and that's what's being displayed you know, um, inner text could be uh, one of the above, published or draft, and this is the actual choices that you have. But we want the value, okay? For other things like um, actual values of account names and that. Okay, I'm just going to go down here. I'll be shadowing these out just so you know. If I look at this here and choose the attribute, this is for Amazon. You'll see that there is a value, and that's the value that I'm selecting, okay? So it works pretty good otherwise. So let's say um, I'm going to say 
I'm not going to stop the script. I'm actually going to let it run. I'm going to let it cook away here. So it's going to go in. It's going to log me in if it's if I'm not logged in. It's going to go to the page. It's going to grab the values. And if everything went well, the script just finishes. It logs me out and I'm done. Okay. Now I'm going to move over to the secondary script here and have another site that I want to migrate these settings to. Now this is what I wanted to show you. Remember we made a list in the previous tab here that contained three fields on each line. Uh, the name of the value that were, or the name of the actual form entry we're selecting, what type it is, and the actual entry from the value or the checked box. Now to turn this around and do this, you're going to notice that if you do a loop and you want to choose my value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log me into this, uh, I'm going to do a stop script here, I'm going to log me into the secondary site here. Okay, so it stopped right where we want to be. So I'm going to go down here and you'll notice that, let's say I want to choose my attribute. If I click on uh, one of the first entries that I select is the randomized post, right click choose by attribute. You notice here I cannot select a variable here. Okay, I can't use the second entry in my list row as the attribute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, yeah, I'm going to go, that's great, that's fine, let's choose that. And then I'm going to go right back and I'm going to take and right click on the attribute. Okay, no, not the attribute, the uh, See here, search string. I'm going to right click on that. And oh, let me just show you one more thing here. In the loop here, what I'm doing is I am opening up the table. Okay. And uh, this loop here counts how many rows are in the table. I set a counter of zero, so it'll start looking at the first row in the table. And I'm going to select here variable. Um, table cell row. Which row am I selecting? Well, I'm going to be selecting from the variable, which is count. Let me just find that. And I'm going to select it from column 1, okay? Because that's the first value that we put over here. Let's just go back over here. Right here. That's the name. Okay, this is what we're actually wanting to fool with here. Okay, when we're setting this up, you could see that I could not select okay so yeah there sorry I have to stop I have two stop pieces here to do so okay so I've selected the actual one that I want to to work with okay the second problem though is when I actually want to just ch choose the chosen attribute or change the chosen attribute. Let's say I'm right clicking and I would select change chosen attribute. Again, you must hard select an attribute. Now I could go through and create two different loops that would go through and see if it's checked or if it is value, okay? But you know, I'm just going to select name, leave it at that, and I'm going to turn right around and the attribute, I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to select table cell robot insert variable. We're going to put the count so we can look through the whole list one after another. Which column? The column is column 1. Remember column 0, 1, 2 in a table. The zero is always the first one. So what I'm doing is I'm actually hard setting the attribute after I've put the command in here. Okay, And then finally the, uh, the new value I want to put in here value, table cell, WP robot, insert, um, sorry, variable, count, and which column? It's column number two. Because the first one, zero, is the name of the field, one is the type of field, and two is the actual value in the field. Okay. So you'll see here, I basically recreated the same command twice. And that's what I wanted to show you. Basically, so now, with just a very simple subroutine, yes, we had to collect each entry 
one by one here because there's no real I could not find a real simple way to do this okay but once I have that into a nice list I can turn right around and open it up as a table grab each value and use a very very simple um, table and a list or sorry table and a loop and uh, literally to fill all those in it's uh, one two commands three commands because we're incrementing our count until we get to the end now let's just make a few changes here so you can see this actually works okay so I'm just gonna uncheck randomize and let's go down here and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna take away these values and I'm gonna say in the same window so those are three different types of values here so I'm just gonna go to the top here and I'm gonna say save options okay so just so you see there's no trickery happening here randomized post is unselected the open links is in the same window and the Amazon affiliate information is missing so let's run this and you'll see that um, we're back on the cool smartphones site and um, the randomized post times is selected in a new window is selected and the actual values for Amazon is selected as well and there you go that's a really simple way to very quickly turn right around and set settings and you can use this for just about anything once you have the form in place and you start selecting entries if there's things that you can duplicate you're good to go Frank Thomas if you want to check out the um, actual subscription site where there's lots of different robots to subscribe to that is at robotslavearmy.com that's www.robotslavearmy.com or if you just want more tutorials for with ubot and learn more about this wonderful package ubotjunkie.com that's www.ubotjunkie.com thanks very much this is frank thomas